In the previous lecture, we have discussed about semaphores and we have seen how semaphores work and how semaphore is a software based solution to the synchronization problem. So, in this lecture, we will be discussing some of the disadvantages of semaphores as well and we will be seeing if we can address these problems and if they can be solved. So, the main disadvantage of the semaphore definition that we have discussed is that it requires busy waiting. So, what do we mean by busy waiting? So, by busy waiting, what we mean is that while a process is in its critical section, any other process that tries to enter its critical section must loop continuously in the entry code. So, in the previous lecture when we have discussed about the definition of semaphores, we have seen how it works. We saw that there was a while loop and then when a process tries to enter its critical section, if some other process is already executing in its critical section, then that process will get stuck in its while loop until and unless the other process exits from its critical section. So, we see that when one process is not able to enter its critical section, it is going to be stuck in the while loop. So, it is going to loop continuously in the entry code and it will keep waiting there. So, that is what we mean by busy waiting. Now, how is busy waiting a problem? So, busy waiting is a problem because busy waiting wastes CPU cycles that some other process might be able to use productively. So, what happens is, when a process is stuck in that while loop, that means when it is looping continuously in the entry code, that process is still using the CPU. Even for it to work inside that while loop or to be looping inside that while loop, we need CPU for that. So, it is just wasting the CPU. So, if this busy waiting was not there, then that wasted CPU could have been used by some other process for doing some other productive work. So, that is a problem that we have with busy waiting. So, this type of semaphore is also called a spin lock because the process spins while waiting for the lock. So, it is very clear why it is called spin lock because we saw that when a process is not able to enter its critical section, it gets looped inside the while loop, not able to come out and hence it is called a spin lock because it is spinning while waiting for the lock. And the main problem with this is that it is wasting our precious CPU cycles which could have been used by some other process productively. So, this is the main disadvantage that we have with this semaphores because it involves busy waiting. Now, the question is, can we address that problem? Can we address the problem where the CPU cycles are wasted due to busy waiting that is involved in semaphores? So, one way we can address it is that to overcome the need for busy waiting, we can modify the definition of the wait and signal semaphore operations. So, by making some slight modifications to the wait and signal operations, we could get rid of this busy waiting. So, this wait and signal are two important operations that are involved in semaphores and we have already discussed in the previous lecture. So, if you have not watched that, you should watch it first, then you will be able to understand what this wait and signal operations mean. Alright, now let's see how can we modify the definition of wait and signal operations to overcome the need of busy waiting. So, we know that when a process executes the wait operation and finds that the semaphore value is not positive, it must wait. So, this is the definition of the wait operation that we have already discussed. So, if the semaphore value is positive in wait, that means it cannot continue and it will just get stuck in the while loop that is present in this wait operation. So, how can we overcome the need for busy waiting here? Here is a solution. However, rather than engaging in busy waiting, the process can block itself. So, what does this mean? The block operation places a process into a waiting queue associated with the semaphore and the state of the process is switched to the waiting state. So, what we mean by this is that when a process gets stuck in the wait operation, when it is going to get stuck in that while loop, instead of engaging in busy waiting, we will make that process to block itself. So, when a process blocks itself, what will happen? It will stop getting stuck in the while loop and instead of that, what we will do is, we will place that process into a queue known as the waiting queue and then the state of the process is switched to the waiting state. So, we will change the state of that process to a waiting state. So, remember that it is now no longer getting stuck in the loop, but instead of getting stuck in the loop, we are placing it into a waiting queue and then we are changing the state of that process to a waiting state. So, it can just be idle and wait for the critical section to become free there. So, it is not going to get stuck in the while loop and waste our CPU cycle for that while loop. Then after that, the control is transferred to the CPU scheduler which selects another process to execute. 
So since it is not stuck in the while loop anymore, it is not going to use that CPU. So that CPU can be used by some other processes. So the control is transferred to the CPU scheduler, which will select another process to execute. So hence we are not going to waste our precious CPU by letting that process loop in that while loop and waste the CPU time. So this is how we can modify the definition of the weight and signal operations for the semaphores in order to avoid the busy waiting. So here we see that we are making use of the waiting queue and then we are going to switch the process to a waiting state. So this could be one solution. But by applying this solution, is it going to solve all our problems and is semaphore going to work very well after this? Let's see. So though we can implement semaphores using that waiting queue, it is still going to lead to something known as deadlocks and starvation. So let's try to understand what we mean by this. So the implementation of a semaphore with a waiting queue may result in a situation where two or more processes are waiting indefinitely for an event that can be caused only by one of the waiting processes. So this is one of the problems that can occur. If we are making use of the waiting queue, this can result in a situation where two processes can end up waiting for an event that can be caused only by one of the waiting processes. And hence both of them end up waiting for each other and it will lead to a situation known as deadlock. So we will be taking an example and hence that will become clearer. So the event in question is the execution of a signal operation. When such a state is reached, these processes are said to be deadlocked. When two processes are waiting for each other to execute the signal operations, then they may end up being deadlocked. And how does that happen? We will be explaining it using this example here. So assume that we have two processes P0 and P1 and they are going to make use of semaphores S and Q. So S and Q are two semaphores that are going to be shared between processes P0 and P1. So in this process P0, this is what happens. It is going to execute the wait operation on semaphore S and then it wants to execute the wait operation on semaphore Q and after all the things are done, it will be signaling the S semaphore and then again signaling the Q semaphore. So what does it mean? By wait, it means that it is going to make use of the S semaphore so that it will be used only by P0 and no other process can use this semaphore S when it is being used by P0. So similarly for Q also. And signal signifies that it is releasing that semaphore. So signal S means P0 is releasing S and signal Q means P0 is releasing Q. And similarly for process P1, it executes the wait operation on semaphore Q. Then after that, it will execute the wait operation on semaphore S. And after all the codes are done, it will signal the Q semaphore, meaning it will release Q. And then again, it will release the S by signaling S. So these are the codes of processes P0 and P1. Now let's see what happens here. So here, P0 executes the wait operation on semaphore S. So let's say that at the same time, P1 is executing the wait operation on semaphore Q. So, so far it's fine. Both of them executed wait operations on S and Q respectively. Now, the next operation that P0 needs to perform is wait operation on Q. Now, what will happen here? We see that it is not going to be able to execute this wait on Q. Why? Because P1 has already executed the wait on Q and Q is currently being held by P1. So P0 is not going to be able to execute this second operation of wait on Q. And at the same time, even for process P1, it wants to execute the wait operation on semaphore S. But we see that P0 has already executed wait on S and hence S is right now being held by process P0. So until and unless S is released by P0, P1 will not be able to execute this wait operation S. So what will happen now? P0 is waiting for this Q which is being held by P1 and P1 is waiting for S which is being held by P0. Now both of them are not able to proceed because we see that this signal S of P0 will be executed only after it completes this wait and then it has to come down like this. Right now it is stuck here. It has executed this wait S but it is not able to come to this operation. Only after it comes here, it will be able to proceed and release S. And even for P1, it is able to release this Q only over here. And it will be able to reach here only after executing this wait S and coming further like this. And it is not able to execute this wait S because this is held by process P0. 
So we see that these two processes are deadlocked. P0 is waiting for P1 and P1 in turn is waiting for P0 and both of them cannot proceed because they are waiting for each other and they can move further only if one of the process frees one of the resources but they are not able to free it because they are coded in such ways. So we say that these two processes are deadlocked. So this situation is what we mean by deadlock and this is one of the problems that we can face with semaphores if we are not careful in the way we are using it. So this is a problem that we have with semaphores. So semaphore itself is a good way for solving the synchronization problem but we also see that it has some disadvantages that we have discussed here. So these are the main disadvantages that we face with semaphores. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.